Okay, so we're going to write a script, and like I mentioned in the last video, you want to be able to write a select statement against this. You can make this part of a function. You can do a lot of different things here. I'm just going to show you the script and let you play around with it. In this video, uh, in this zip file, is the script itself so that you don't have to type it all. Uh, let's get started. You, you need to know a couple of important things first. First, uh, you need to know, by the way, XP login info does work in SQL Server 2000. A little bit different, but this video is for SQL Server 2005 and 2008. Okay. So you need to recognize that there is a catalog view called Server Principles. And if you have worked with security in SQL Server, and you've watched our security videos, you'll understand that this really maps to the logins in the server. Uh, the ones that we're looking for over here under the type description is we're looking at Windows Groups versus Windows Logins. And we're really going to use this type column because we could say where type equal G and this returns only the Windows Groups that are logins. So when I run that, you can then see a query that shows you all of the Windows groups that are installed on our SQL Server. And there is the SQL DBAs. And so what you want to do then is you could say, uh, you could play around with this if you want to in your, uh, uh, your SQL stuff here. Uh, but what you could then do is pass this information to XP login info. So I could say, I want this one. And I want to see the members. Okay, those are the members of that one. And then I want this one. And I want to see the members of that one. But that gets a little bit tedious for those of you that have a large server to work with. You probably, when you run this, you might have 50 rows or more on a large server. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this name. And so here is our script. We're going to create a table. First thing is, uh, let's just go ahead and set the no count on. Uh, so we're going to create a Windows Groups table, and it will just have a single column called Name. Don't get tripped up that this turns blue. Notice that Type turned blue, and it ran just fine. Uh, a lot of people, when I'm teaching in class, they tend to they want to correct me. Hey, you got to do something with that. Name is a keyword, but it's not a reserved keyword, so this works just fine. No syntax errors here. Uh, and what we'll do then is we'll populate the Windows Groups table with our select name from sys.serverPrinciples. And we don't actually have to include master dot. Uh, you're able to access us from any database, type equal G. And we could prefix with, with the Unicode in. It doesn't uh, matter to us here. And if you would like just to verify the Windows Groups information, then you'll be able to see that it has a selectable populated table. Okay? All right, so once you have that, the next thing that you'll want to do is the returned table contains the users that are in the groups from Windows Groups. Now here's the tricky part. You have to match the output of XP login info exactly. So what you have to do is you have to create yourself a table, uh, table variable, sorry. Users in groups, it's a table, and it's going to have one, two, three, four, five columns, and account name, and notice that I could name these the same. I could name them different. Uh, I will name them the same uh, just because they are. These are sys names. Uh, I'm not exactly sure of every single data type. The sys name is an nvar car 128. So it's a Unicode 128, which is the limitation of the user and group names. So you are safe using it here. Uh, the type, again, just because it turns blue doesn't mean you have to delimit that. Uh, sys name, privilege, uh, sys name, mapped login name. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, let's see over here. We'll move that down here. And then permission path, sys name, and we'll do this. So I need to clean this up because I will save this like I mentioned. Uh, 
and we'll just do it like this. This is how I tend to do my larger scripts, just like that. So we'll create the table. And what we now could do is we could say insert users in groups, and we can now execute the stored procedure. So we'll just populate this. And let me use a shorter um, group name. So we'll use this one here. And remember, we want to use the members. And then I can say select all from users in groups. So let's just run this part of the code. And oh, I got to use my exec, don't I? Sorry about that. Silly syntax. And sure enough, now we have a queryable result set where I could now say where uh, privilege equals admin. So now that you have this in queryable form, the key thing to do next is to get all of them. Now this may, depending on how many users uh, and groups you have, this may be really impossible for you. But I'll present it to you and you make the smart decision. What we now need to do is basically loop through every group in the Windows Groups table and run XP Log Info members and pass that into the Users in Groups table. So to do this, I've got a, there's a couple of different techniques. Basically, you're doing a loop. You're iterating. So we're going to declare, and if you've watched on uh, Transact SQL, uh, LearnTransactSQL.com, if you've watched all the videos on uh, doing looping and such, then you'll understand what I'm doing. If you do, haven't really been to LearnTransactSQL.com and written loops before, then you might want to go up there and search for uh, loops and cursors and such like that. Uh, but current name is going to give us, uh, we'll do top one just uh, for uh, ease equals name from Windows Groups. And then we could basically just do a while loop. While current name is not null, we want to do a loop. And anytime I do a loop, I like to terminate that uh, loop before I really start getting into the code. So we will delete Windows Groups where name equal current name. We will assign current name equal null. Uh, that's sort of our terminator when it's not null. And then we just simply rewrite our assignment. And then if there are no more rows in the Windows Groups because you've deleted them all in the previous statement, then current name will be null and that kills the loop. But what we want to do now is we want to execute XP login info and we want to say the current name, right? That's the one that it will pass into. So this current name, if you remember, is the name of the group. And you want to say members. And I'll just go ahead and run this just to show you what it's going to do. But it will generate a list. A result set, okay, these are the uh, members of the built-in administrators. This is the member of this. Uh, down at the bottom, these are the members of the SQL DBAs. But it brought them back in separate result sets. That's the problem. You can't really query that because those are all different result sets. So now all you have to do is add your insert. So now you just say insert users in groups, and you populate it. And then the final bit is to say select from your users in groups. And there you go. There's your result set. And you could say, only show me those users where privilege equals admin, for example. And now, when you run it, it only shows you those that have admin as a privilege. Very cool. I hope you can play with this on your own. You can wrap this in a stored procedure, uh, do all kinds of things. You can do reporting from this. Uh, but I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this as a file. Uh, and it will be called um, A2XP Login Info, and because that's the file name that I'm going to create this video as. And now that you have it, you can do what you will.